We did have a situation in Africa where a NATO cleared engagement in Libya took place that South Africa signed off and allowed to take place under the tenure, under the presidency of uh, Jacob Zuma. Some would argue that that was the biggest own goal in the 20th century for Africa as a step towards realizing what the founding fathers of Pan-Africanism spoke to of becoming one continent. You remember sentiments. what I said? Yeah. In 1963, NATO was in full force. Yeah. Again. Move forward. Come to Libya. NATO was in full force. Right. They knew what Gaddafi was going to do. Right. Remember when he was the chairman of the African Union, yeah. Gaddafi had the money. If there were any brown envelopes, it would be him mm. <laughs> passing the brown envelopes to get the vote. Got it. Gaddafi was working towards a single currency. Gaddafi was you working know. towards a, 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 mili a single uh, military. Gaddafi right. was getting ready to do what was supposed to be done in 1963. Mm -hmm. He was moving fast and furious. Right. NATO did not want it. He had to, mm -hmm. he had to be executed. Right. So they had to eliminate him. Quite simply, before we go to a break, we sold ourselves out. We sure did. All right, then we'll take we a sold short. ourselves out with Libya. Right. We sold ourselves out in 1963 during the creation of the OAU, which was a compromise uh, outcome. We should have achieved an Africa that spoke with one voice in 1963. Speaking with one voice, we'll take a short break and be right back with our final segment. Thanks, Steve. Welcome back to the third and final segment of Economics 101. Exciting segment earlier on. They got a bit tongue-tied towards the end, barely managed to close it. But we are still joined in studio by the founder and president of the African Diaspora Development Institute, Dr. Arikana Chiombori. Now, um, some insightful sentiments that you've shared in our discussion so far, uh, Doc. I'm concerned about Zimbabwe's current position when it comes to sanctions. You highlighted earlier on there 21 years uh, some would look at uh, that as blatant injustice, but at the same time, it is a decision that was made in Congress in the U.S. under Zidera. It's not the kind of decision that, going to be sh that, that can and will be shifted overnight. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. How then does Zimbabwe engage the fight, preparing itself for the long haul, but at the same time realizing the economic benefits that have come as a result of the sanctions imposed on the country? Well... Zimbabwe is an amazing country. I was a young woman when Ian Smith would boom on television that Zimbabwe will never be free, Zimbabwe will never have black rule, not in his lifetime and not in a million years. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? We won. Right. Bit the crap out of them. A lot of Africans did not believe that we could win. We did. Mm. If we have survived as Zimbabweans, 21 years of sanctions, what's another year? Right. What's five more years? In fact, as Zimbabwean has emerged, we have gotten more entrepreneurs. I'm here with my uh, vice president, who is an, an African-American. He is amazed at the number of entrepreneurs who are all over the country. He sees them every day. Mm -hmm. He engages them. He talks to them. Yes, it's been a very difficult time. But we are just as resilient. Right, right. The resilience we showed during the War of Liberation, mm -hmm. it is the same resilience that we have shown in the past 21 years. Mm -hmm. It is the same resilience that's going to carry us through. Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe is moving forward right. with or without sanctions. Why? Because what we have, mm -hmm. which is the best thing Zimbabwe has, is the people. Right. Hardworking, intelligent, resistant, mm -hmm. and like I like to say, mm -hmm. Beautiful, <laughs> intelligent, right. sophisticated, right. highly adaptable, mm -hmm. and totally indestructible. Give us an appreciation of how you see that shift of Africans within the diaspora making their way into what a lot proverbially refer to as the motherland. Yes. The reason the Africans in the diaspora, both the historic diaspora, who are descendants of the formerly enslaved, and those who left Africa in search of greener pastures, what has kept them? from engaging Africa and investing in Africa is the lies mm -hmm. from the West. The media has portrayed Africa as a diseased and dying continent. Stay away from there. Don't go there. Now, if I were to use the example of Zimbabwe, it's their own beautiful secret. They want to keep it to themselves. They are coming to invest in Zimbabwe in masses. Mm -hmm. They are coming to invest in Africa in masses. And yet the average black person out there is being told, don't go to Africa. It's a diseased and dying continent. There is where we need to begin. 
refocus, re-educate, and speak truth to power about our Africa. Right. You don't expect those who put us in a position of servitude to undo the damage. They will continue it for as long as we are stupid enough to continue to listen to their lies. Mm. Wake up Africa. Mm -hmm. Wake up black people around the world. Mm -hmm. Africa is your problem. Mm -hmm. Own it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right. For Africa to change, for you to be able to benefit from what is yours. Mm -hmm. What's in Africa is the inheritance of every black person on earth. Right. But if you're stupid enough to listen to the lies, mm -hmm. and while they continue to exploit your Africa, while they continue to amass wealth, wealth for their children, grandchildren, and generations to come, then the joke on you. But until we educate you, until we make you aware of what is really going on, and that is where we elders come in, we must speak truth to power. Right. That's why we need the Pan-African television that's going to boom the history, that's going to let people know mm -hmm. that you are part of an experiment an experiment to make sure that you continue right. to be mm -hmm. in bondage. Right. Understand that mm -hmm. you are actually in shackles of the right. mind. Mm -hmm. That this war we are in, the war of hashtag African economic liberation. Right. We were denied economic liberation at this fake independence. Right. Our people must understand the dynamics. That the, the systems that are in place, the World Bank, IMF, the Britain Woods institutions, mm -hmm. we must fight and push for them to be dismantled right. because they never included Africa mm -hmm. as part of the, their success is based on the failure of African nations mm -hmm. and other developing nations. Right. So why do we need, why do we participate? Why do African ministers of finance even go to, to, to Washington? Was, yes. you, so so yeah, I'm saying understand you, the systems, right. the financial systems, the trade systems, right. the UN, mm -hmm. those systems are not for us. Right. They must be dismantled. Right. Let's not participate mm -hmm. in them. Your position in that regard when it comes to raw materials leaving the African continent, I understand that also within uh, Francophone countries, um, I think uh, Ivory Coast and I forget which other one, have also limited cocoa uh, yeah. uh, being uh, given to, I think, Belgium or yeah. Switzerland, but either one of the two. It seems as though that there is a resurgence of the Renaissance, if I could call it that. There is a uh, Hershey City in, in, in uh, uh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. There is... Um, What's that city in the, U in the UK? Um, I forgot the city. Mm -hmm. Both cities are built out of cocoa out of West Africa. Right. Where is that cocoa city in Africa? As long as they are eating our lunch and we let them, they will continue. We have not stopped them. That is really the problem. Why aren't we stopping them? We're afraid. We were taught to be afraid sure. of them. You sit a black man in mm -hmm. front of a white man, mm -hmm. we start shaking. Right. So countries like Zimbabwe are ones that initiated this direct engagement. Okay. We seem to have a challenge with the follow suit, your sentiments. How then do we get that following suit of this, other countries? The same spirit that led us to an independent Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. the same spirit that led us to an independent Namibia, independent Mozambique, independent right. Angola, independent Algeria. Mm -hmm. Mauritius, you right, name it, right. that same spirit mm -hmm. must be awoken. I, we go to the next phase mm -hmm. of our war. Right. We no longer need bazookas mm -hmm. to fight this war. Right. This is a war of the mind. Mm -hmm. This is a war of enlightenment. This is a war of understanding what is really going on. The right. question is, how well do you love your children? How well do you love your grandchildren? Mm -hmm. Do you really want to leave this world the way it is for them? Right. If you love your children, next time you go into that boardroom and you're in a position of power, speak up. You are not speaking up for yourself. You are speaking up for your children and generations to come. That is the spirit that we need. Right. That is the kind of war that we are mm. fighting. It is a war of And we hope we'll find ourselves at that point. Now, in March 2018, African countries signed a landmark trade agreement, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, which commits countries to removal of tariffs on 90% of goods, progressively liberalizing trade and services and also addressing a host of other non-tariff barriers. How does this contribute to the development of African economies? It would work well. On paper, it's a beautiful document, but its in implementation is a monster. Okay. Its implementation is mixed with all kinds of interferences. Again, NATO is in full force. Mm -hmm. if, if I was at a luncheon. It was a program about the AFCFTA during my tenure. During the lunch break, this will underscore to you the problems within the AFCFTA and the implementation. Right. I was sitting at a table with 10 other ambassadors and ministers. And one minister very casually mm -hmm. said, you know, this AFCFTA, if we don't get authorization from France, right. it's never going to work. Right. And I was expecting them to say, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Everybody was in agreement. Right. I was shocked. 
everybody was in agreement mm -hmm. that if France does not approve its impl implementation, it's not going to work. Is lost in corrupt, illicit uh, financial flows outside of the continent. Mm -hmm. There is a strong economic base of Africa to the diaspora. Tell us a bit about how that economic inclusion will take place, but more importantly, on the concept of the sixth region, so that they too can have a placing, a placed foot, a firm footing rather, uh, within economic development. Yes. Final, final remarks. Also goes back to our understanding of the issues. Most people are not even aware that the African Union defines sixth region as all people of African descent living outside Africa. In 2002, when AU was transitioning from OAU into AU, the heads of states included mm -hmm. the sixth region as part of the AU constitution. Mm -hmm. The ball is now in the court of the African diaspora to then organize and come up with a document that you can present to the African heads of states to make sure that when it comes to those contracts that are deemed international, it is only fitting, it is only right, it is only fair that they look to the children of Africa first. We as Africa are the only continent that looks to outsiders when it comes to development. Right. Chinese people don't look outside. Mm -hmm. Europeans don't look outside. Mm -hmm. No other countries look outside except Africa. The reason the African heads of states are looking outside is because we, the African diaspora, are not organized. Mm -hmm. We are not united. So we are saying game is over. April this year, the president of Zimbabwe has agreed to host a conference that's going to put an end to the plight of th children of Africa in the diaspora. Right. The Pan-African Congress number eight is going to be hosted right here in Zimbabwe. Right. The big house made of stone, the house that used to host the children of Africa, right. where they felt comfort, where they were protected. Mm -hmm. Once again, the big house made of stone right. is going to call upon the children of Africa. They are going to be arriving in Zimbabwe in masses from all over the world to put an end to the outcry of the children of Africa, mm -hmm. descendants of the formerly enslaved, all they ever wanted right. when they were captured while fetching firewood, right. when they were captured while fetching water, when they were captured while vi visiting grandmother, all they ever wanted to do was come back home. Right. For over 400 years, nobody has listened to their cries. Mm -hmm. Well, President Emerson Mnangagwa has heard their cries, right. and we will meet here in Zimbabwe, and the story of over 400 years is going to come to an end. Dr. Chobori, thank you so much for your contributions, and I must say it has been a very insightful discussion. I wish we had a lot more time, but looking also at... Um, the recent, well, the upcoming uh, Pan-African Congress. How then does an African in Africa who also wants to be part of such an initiative that speaks towards the African collective contribute? It's part of the conversation. Yeah. The PAC is about re-engaging with our brothers and sisters on the continent. I won't mention which countries, mm -hmm. but there are some countries that have a bill that says unity between descendants of the formerly enslaved and their brothers and sisters on the continent must be avoided at all cost. Right. So we are saying the rule of divide and conquer, mm -hmm. that game is over. Right. We are now awoken, our eyes are open, mm -hmm. and we are coming home to re-engage with our brothers and sisters. So yes, Africans on the continent must participate. Right. Because at the end of the day, when we talk about the issues of dual citizenship, when you talk about the issues right. of establishing a, a sixth region headquarters outside Africa, mm -hmm. we're going to have to go back to the parliaments right. all over Africa right. to have those issues right. ratified. Right. The children of Africa, they must come and be part of that conversation. Right. They must be prepared. We are hoping that when mm -hmm. we come out of the meeting, right. the PAC-8, mm -hmm. we are going to come up with a document that we are going to call the African Diaspora Harale Declaration. Dr. Mbori, thank you so much for joining us. And we thoroughly do look forward to speaking to you again in future. Thank you. Right. I'm always here. Right. That does uh, bring us to the end of our discussions. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here on Economics 101. Pleasant view.